here are the problems for chapter 16. First question. You know, whenever you do these problems, just follow the six steps that you require. You know, and the first thing is to read the question. It talks about a spring scale and you got to find the mass of the fish. First, what is the force constant of the spring? The spring stretches 8 centimeters for a 10 kilogram load. So that's the information given. So X is given and the mass is given. That means you can find the force. So you got X and F, you got to find K. And K is minus F by X, which is minus MG by X. All right, because force is M times G. And uh, the point 0.08 is because you've got to convert the centimeters into meter. And you get 1.23 times 10 to the 3. The unit for K is Newton per meter. B says, what's the mass of a fish that stretches the spring 5.50 centimeters? So now you've got to find the mass. Uh, since you already got K, just rearrange to find the mass. And it is 1.225 times 10 to the 3, which is what you get before you round it off. And times 0 0.0550 divided by 9.8, which gives you 6.875 which is 6.88 kilograms. And in the C part, how far apart are the half kilogram marks on the scale? Which means, what's the distance between the marks for each half a kilogram? So now you've got to make X the subject. And the mass is half a kilogram times 9.80 by the K before rounding off. And uh, you get 4.00 times 10 to the negative 3 meter. That brings us to the second question. A tire has a tread pattern with a crevice every 2 centimeters. And it makes a single vibration as the tire moves. What is the frequency of these vibrations if the car moves at 30 meter per second? Now, frequency is given by velocity by wavelength. Here, the velocity is 30 meter per second, and 2 centimeters is 0.02 in meters. And all you got to do is just divide, get 1500 hertz. That's the answer to that question. Number three, a diver on a diving board is undergoing simple harmonic motion. Her mass is 55 kilogram, and the period of her motion is 0.8 seconds. The next diver is a male whose period of simple harmonic oscillation is 1.05 seconds. What is his mass? And if the mass of the board is negligible. Now this is a comparison problem. And of course the diving board is going to act like a spring. Therefore the equation that we use is the equation for time period of vibrations of a spring. Which is 2 pi square root mass pi the spring constant. All right, and since it's a comparison problem, just take the ratio T1 by T2 is equal to square root M1 by M2. And you have to find the mass of the second person, so that's made the subject. And simply substitute the given qualities, all of them are in proper units, and you would get. 94.7 kilogram as the answer. This question talks about at what rate will a pendulum clock run on the moon where the acceleration due to gravity is 1.63 meter per second squared if it keeps time accurately on the earth. Okay, we do know that the acceleration due to gravity on the moon is about one sixth of that on the earth. And this is, of course, a pendulum clock, so we're going to use the formula t is 2 pi square root of L by G, where, okay, GE in this case and TE 
The subscript E just shows the Earth. Now similarly on the Moon you could write a formula which would have Tm is equal to 2 pi square root L by G M. And when you divide T by Tm, the two pi's will get cancelled and you will get GE by GM because you know the length will again get cancelled and this will be reversed because it's in the denominator, right? And then you just substitute 9.80 is the acceleration on the earth and 1.63 on the moon, and so you get 2.45 hours. That means for one rotation, the clock's hour hand will take 2.45 hours because the time period is considerably greater on the moon, which means the clock runs 2.45 times slower than on the earth. Now this question is radio waves are transmitted through space at 3 times 10 to the 8 meter per second by the Voyager spacecraft having a wavelength of 0 0.120 meter. What is their frequency? That's direct. Velocity is frequency multiplied by wavelength and so frequency is just, uh, you know, velocity divided by wavelength. Both in proper units, both one is in meter per second, the other is in meters, so just divide and you get 2.50 times 10 to the 9 hertz. And that's the frequency of the radio waves. Next one, twin jet engines on an airplane are producing an average sound frequency of 4100 hertz with a beat frequency of 0.5 hertz. What are their individual frequencies? See, beats is a phenomenon that's produced when you have two vibrating objects that have frequencies really close to each other. Now you see in this problem that there are these are twin jet engines, so there are two engines, and both of them are producing frequencies that are really close to each other, and because the beat frequency is given as 0.5 hertz, we know that the difference in frequencies between them is 0 0.500, because beat frequency is equal to the difference in frequencies. And again, the average frequency is given as 4100. We know average is sum of the two divided by two. So just using logic, because the average is 4100 hertz, and the frequency of beats is the difference between them, which is 0 0.5. I should have said 0 0.500. 0. Um, we know that one of the frequencies must be 4100.250, the other must be 4099.750. Simple logic because, yeah, now I corrected it. If you take the mean of these two quantities, now you're going to get this. Yet, if you take the difference between these two, you're going to get 0 0.500. And these are the only two numbers that would work. So that's the answer. The low frequency speaker of a stereo set has a surface area of 0 0.05 meters squared and produces 1 watt of caustical power. What is the intensity at the speaker? First question. Second one, if the speaker projects sound uniformly in all directions, at what distance from the speaker is the intensity 0 0.1 watt per meter squared? So again, there are two questions. First, you have to find the intensity at the speaker. Remember that intensity is power divided by area. So intensity is power divided by area. You give them the power, that's one watt, and the area is there. So just divide those and you get the intensity in watt per meter squared. B. We know that intensity is power divided by area, but in this case, the area is power divided by intensity when you rearrange.
which gives you the area as 10 meters squared. But yet we know that sound goes in all directions in the form of a sphere. So we have the surface area of a sphere for area. Now that we know that the area is already 10, you can rearrange and make R the subject. You would get square root A by 4 pi and A is 10.0 divided by 4 pi and you would get the radius and this radius here is actually the distance from the speaker at which the intensity is 0 0.1 so remember at the speaker the power is 1 watt the intensity is 20 at the speaker yet 0.892 meters away the intensity falls to 0.1 watt per meter squared because it's going in all directions that's why it's falling so drastically a pendulum has a period of uh, three point you look at the numbers the number of significant figures here is really great and uh, you will see why uh, it's located where the acceleration due to gravity is 9.79 meter per second squared and now the pendulum pendulum is moved to a location where the acceleration is 9.82, what is its new period? Well, we do know that the time period depends on the acceleration due to gravity, and this is the formula. At the second place, it will be similar. The length is the same. It's only the acceleration due to gravity that has changed. Therefore, this is again a ratio question. If you divide, you get G1 by G2. Hold on. I just noticed that that's supposed to be G2 by G1. Let me see whether I correct it. So T2 is equal to T1. T2 is T1. G2 by G1. It should be G2 by G1. All right. So 3.00, that's T1. G2. That's 9 point, oh, that's G1, okay. Gives you 2.99541 seconds. Okay, I've gone ahead and corrected it. If you notice, that's the square root G2 by G1, but when you bring it to the other side, it's going to be square root G1 by G2 sides are switched and so the answer is correct okay and why do we need uh, so many digits uh, because you know the time period depends on the square root and so that means the change is going to be a very small one and therefore unless you have so many significant figures uh, virtually you may think that there is no change so that is why we need to have so many digits. If a pendulum driven clock gains 5 seconds per day, what fractional change in pendulum length must be made for it to keep perfect time? Okay, it's uh, gaining 5 seconds per day. So what fractional change must be made for it to keep for perfect time? Now, this is a very good question. Look at it. How much does it gain? Five seconds per day. Now, we need to look at how many seconds are in a day. It's 24 times 60 times 60, which is 86,400. Okay, now, time period is, one more time, 2 pi square root L by G. And T final by T initial would be equal to square root length final by length initial. Well, in this case, it's not going to be reversed because the length is in the numerator. So it's the right thing that I've written here. And 8.64 times 10 to the 4 seconds in a day, 86,400 seconds in a day. How do you get that? 24 hours times 60 times 60 because one minute has 60 seconds and one hour 
has 60 minutes. So 8.64 times 10 to the 4 seconds plus 5 seconds because it says it gains, right? Divided by 8.64 times 10 to the 4 is equal to LF by LI. When you divide this quantity after you add it, you know, that means you add these two and divide it by this, this is what you get. Now we can make LF the subject and uh, you get this because that's what you get when you square this. Okay. And keeping the significant figures in mind. So now you see that the final length is 1.000116 times the initial length. Therefore the increase must be that percent which means the increase must be the difference which is this one times 100 because I've expressed it as a percentage. That's how I get point not 116 percent. So those are the an uh, answers to the questions and I hope you understood those. Try to study them and do you good on the exam. Thank you.